Welcome everybody to the Conway Select Board meeting of May, I'm sorry, May, <laughs> July 15th, 2014. <laughs> Let me start this again. Let me start this again. Reboot. <laughs> Reboot. Okay. The, uh, year. Take me back. To, yeah. the, to the Monday, July uh, 15th, uh, 2024 meeting. I call the meeting to order. Um, since we have esteemed residents and colleagues here, um, if it's okay with the two of you, I'll just skip the uh, first agendas and move on to new business. That's awesome. Yes. Great. All right. First on new business is the Cemetery Commission report and discussion and vote on the sale of the cemetery plot at South Park Cemetery. Welcome. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Uh, I'm Peter Friesen. I uh, passed the dump. <laughs> yeah. So um, there is uh, one person um, interested in purchasing a lot um, for her mother, mm -hmm. and so that's what's on the agenda. Okay. Um, and. It all in order. It just needs to be approved by you, and then we'll take care of the <laughs> footwork for it. Right. So. so, how many how many lots are available at that cemetery? Um, we've got. Um, I don't remember exactly how many we figured out that there are. Um, there are you know, 10 or 15. Okay. In, 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 uh, we've sold, there was one previous sale uh, um, about a month ago. Okay. And then um, the, um, someone else came and said she was interested in um, trying to take care of that. And we'll, um, we're planning on posting a um, notice on our Space on the Town uh, website just mm -hmm. saying that there are some the, 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 There's some availability. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, you yeah, know, people are so used to Howland and um, Pine Road that, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they're not aware. Is, it, is there, just out of curiosity, is there the, the cemetery in Pumpkin Hollow? Are there any spaces left there, or is that not? Um, there will likely be, um, but there will probably be um, cremation burials, mm -hmm. because it's a little harder to figure out yeah. on that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the spaces are smaller, and yeah. don't want to. Um, impede on, um, on, the, on the existing spaces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, the, the, the sale amount is the same for all of the cemeteries, right? A plot is $300 for any plot. Yeah. I'll make a motion to uh, let this sale of the cemetery plot at South Park happen. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. And it looks like um, all of us need to sign it. Yeah, I think it's probably best. There had been some discussion back and forth about whether or not the cemetery commission was going to ask for permission, but I think they decided to do the sales themselves, but I think they decided to keep it with the select board. So um, it's probably best to just have everybody sign. So there's two copies. Okay, there. I was going to say, I was just making sure that the lot is doing a great job. Looks very tidy. Yeah, that's uh, the association. Oh, it looks good. Yeah. So. And then you were going to let them know about all the amazing work you've been doing? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been busy the last uh, a dozen years or so. Um, there are three directories. Um, One's for the town cemeteries, and then the other two 
directories are for um, Pine Grove and Howland. Um, they're much larger, and uh, they have their own um, directories. But um, there are uh, uh, listings of all the burials in each of the cemeteries. So we, we have a complete listing of the town cemetery plus Pine Grove and Howland. Uh, so it took me a while. <laughs> But um, it's um, existent <laughs> and excellent and um, and um, quite nice. And so um, copies are available uh, in the office next door at the um, select board's office. Uh, the um, history society. Uh, historical Society, and um, um, the um, members of the commission each have, well, each have one as well, so. Well, Veronique has raved about the work you've done over the couple years I've been here, so it's greatly appreciated. Yeah, well, it's nice to have, you know, yeah. I, I've passed, uh, um, Pumpkin Hollow Cemetery every time I go someplace. And, <laughs> um, I'm also in, into family history and knew um, what a um, resource it would be. So. so there's a cemetery on Wilder Hill Road. Is that a Conway Cemetery? Wilder. It's right on the Conway Shelburne. It's, it's right before the, the Conway Shelburne line. It's on Wilder Hill Road, and, so, and I've always wondered about that, whether it's yeah, like Yeah, that's uh, the Shirtshire Cemetery. Okay. And that is a town cemetery. Okay, so is that in the catalog as well? Awesome. Yes. Okay. It has about 80 burials, I think. Mm -hmm. So. There's one stone in Pine Grove that's like super cut off from everything else, and it's a kid. A child, yeah, you know, that I, you know, keep wanting to tell them, Mo, oh, do this. It's like actually like in the <laughs> yeah. It, it would be hard to get to that. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, it. I'm not sure why it's out that far. I don't either. It's so strange. I mean, I found it snowshoeing, but mm -hmm. it's like very much like in the back right corner behind the McLeish mm -hmm. thing. Uh, it's interesting, one little headstone. So, uh, Thank you for all of your work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Amazing. It's, it's amazing. Well, well, good to have. Yeah, it took a while. Yeah, yeah I could. <laughs> a lot of those are hard to read, too. Yeah. Uh, there are some that are illegible, and um, but, yeah, we have a record of them anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. So. Well, thank you, Peter. Appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. What, was there also a plan? I, I'm sorry, I can't remember. You were talking about maybe it would put it in some searchable database. Somebody was going to look into that. Yeah. Um, I. We haven't met to discuss it yet. I'm sorry. I don't know. One of the other members of the commission was had some information on it, and we're going to uh, talk about it at the August meeting. Okay. One of the reasons I bring it up is because if, you know, we have this new senior and veteran tax workout program, and if you might need somebody to enter some data, no, that's a great that idea. might be Add something a list of possible jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I have vast experience in building searchable databases. Ooh. <laughs> so I would be happy to volunteer my time to build a database that people oh, can search cool. as long as someone else does Ooh. the data entry. We might, we might get you up with Sold. capital, <laughs> capital improvement. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you again. Okay. Yeah, 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 thank you so much. Else? Huh? Unless you have something for us. No. <laughs> Go Red Sox. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it. I know. It's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. I did.
to show you what I'm wearing later. Ugh. Is there like a <laughs> or something happening? No, it's a, it's uh all star break, but they're doing way better than they were predicted to happen. Next on new business is the discussion with the Board of Health about the use of opioid funds. Do you want to pass Yes. Here are some handouts. I brought slides that we can walk through. Great. So there's one for each of you, and here's. Yeah. Takes a lot of ink, so I didn't want to print Just to let you know that the only things that have been spent so far are for the five ADBs. Right. Um, take it away, Kat. All right. I am Kat Lamas. I'm the chair of the Conway Board of Health, for those who might not know. And um, ever since the opioid settlement funds were even talked about, it's something that has been uh, important to the Board of Health. Of course, we want to make sure that um, we support members of our town that have um, either by direct, um, by direct need of opioids help or to help educate those that might have families that have opioid uh, users that could use support. And so this is something that's very dear to the, um, the Board of Health. And I know uh, we had used some of our funds for, uh, for the defibrillators, but also uh, the Board of Health wanted to uh, make sure we had Narcan, Narcan boxes available to, uh, to our citizens. And um, that was an a, important piece to our puzzle. But we also have something else that is important in our way of thinking, and that is um, the opioid settlement funds and our region, regionalized, have programs and things that would benefit members of Conway and other surrounding towns to get opioid support. And so I wanted to meet with you to talk about how we might use um, some of the opioids, opioid settlement money to support these other projects. And so I invited Phoebe here to um, go over some of this information with everyone. And then I have some recommendations that I would like to suggest um, as we wind things up. So if, uh, if you'll indulge us, that would be great. Thanks. Um, also, these are the oh, yeah. naloxone cabinets that we ended up getting through a different grant source. So there are two earmarked for Conway. Um, and the way they work is they're like 24 seven outdoor and then they just open up and there's the Narcan. Um, so I know that the Board of Health is in discussions about locations, but um, we would then have a sort of an, a local host and then a, uh, we would also check it while we're in town. We'll show and tell. Um, cool. <laughs> what's that? That's amazing. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah, it's yeah. great. And it has a number to call, the phone number for not using a loan, so that someone's on the phone with you in case you stop breathing while you're using. Um, so anyway, hi. hi. Um, I'm Phoebe Walker. If we haven't met before, I'm the Director of Community Health at the Council of Government. So my job is sort of to work with all town entities on anything health related. So that can be everything from mosquito stuff to like Kat was just at a mosquito tabletop we had, you know, or it might be training about cannabis or it might be working with schools on youth prevention stuff. And, um, and part of what we do at the COG is we host your regional health department, right? You have health agents and public health nurses through us that are here monthly and do inspections around town so um, and we're always happy to come if you ever want us back on anything but in particular um, Kat would like me to sort of give you my quick and dirty slideshow of the opioid settlement I know Elaine since you're new 
Um, I, I figure it would be helpful to hear just a little overview of how it works. So pretend I'm clicking. <laughs> so I'm starting with this slideshow. I'm a clinical psychologist and I run five mental health clinics, okay. so I do have a little background. No, no, I just mean about the settlements, yeah. not about the... Um, <laughs> I have every reason to believe you yeah. know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, so basically, the, you know, the, the main thing about the settlements is that these 29 attorneys general negotiated it with the providers, right? With the, with the um, producers. Uh, and the money that's coming into Massachusetts, 40% um, came to us as towns, and 60% is staying at the state for different rounds of grant funding. There will be a municipal round of grant funding coming up. Um, and there's been a lot of frustration, I will not lie, in the recovery community about how slow it is. This money has been coming into town coffers for close to three years now. Nothing's really showed up on the street for them. Um, and that is because the, um, and originally the Department of Revenue told us all it had to be put into a stabilization account. So it sat there for a year while we all got ready for town meeting and we all moved it with a two-thirds vote into the stabilization account. Then we would have to vote to move it back out the next year, right? So that was a whole year we lost. And then in January, they said, just kidding, you can put it into a special purpose revenue fund. So um, I was at the gym with your town accountant this morning and uh, he confirmed it's there. Um, so now it's in a place where it can be spent as soon as the select board has signed off on the expenditures. Um, so if you go to the section of Three, or no, that's just what we've been doing. So slide three is um, sort of what the COGS role has been, which is basically to keep a web page updated for all of you, to make sure that before town meeting, we're sending out information about what to do with it there, and that we're sort of attending um, whatever state training is available. Um, the local boards of health, including Kat, and I hosted a listening session um, for people with lived experience of, of opioid use disorder to come and talk to us about what they thought should be done with the funding and what they need. Um, and then we've been having some regional meetings to talk it over. Um, based on what they suggested was needed, um, I then went out and met with different providers on behalf of the Boards of Health to say, this is something that was identified in the listening session. Is this something you could provide a proposal for, for regional spending? Um, and then um, we also got what data we could for those info sheets you have. They're not very satisfactory. Our population is small and they won't give you data when there's fewer than six people. Who, so for good reasons, people's privacy is protected. But we went uh, and got every piece of town level data we could, which is in that fact sheet you have there. And certainly what it shows is there are people in all of our towns um, who are in active recovery. Um, and presumably some who aren't um, yet in recovery, but who we would like to reach. Um, and then we, 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 so the subset of towns that actually has its health district at the FERCOG, we then met to come up with a proposal, and that's what Kat is here to bring you tonight. So we can skip the one about the town expenditure process, I think, except to say that, um, You've moved the money into the right place, and then you know the guidance from the state is listen to impacted community members. Your board of health has done that by being part of the listening session, um, and then people needing to decide whether they want to collaborate regionally or spend the funds individually, um, and then um, to per to discuss the projects we're bringing you. Can I ask you, sorry, yeah. a quick question about yeah. the expenditure process? Yeah. Because when this was all going on, and like you said, the state changed their mind and everything, but when I first made my inquiries to the state about who was allowed and authorized to spend funds and what was the process, I think it was Care Mass, yeah. told me that the town needed to come up with a plan yeah. for how they were going to spend the funds. So it, has that changed at all? Is there anything? There's not a written plan. Um, so there's not like a requirement to have a written action oh, plan. They told me we needed. They're used to dealing with much bigger towns with a lot more money. So okay. you do need to have a plan. Your, your town, like it says here, first you need to clarify who gets to make the plan. In most towns, that's the Board of Health with the endorsement of the select board. Uh -huh. So you decide who's gonna make the decisions and then they bring the decision to the select board because you're the CEOs of the town. You vote to do that thing or not, as is your right. Um, 
and then you can just do it. But you, there's not a written plan that has to be submitted. Okay, because that's what I was told. I mean, I had yeah. emails that told me that I had to have. Yeah, they're, they're, so I just wanted to clarify. I don't believe so. They've not, that's oh, not on anywhere. Yeah. Plan. yeah. <laughs> they're, it's a good idea, right? Because um, you could have another election, everybody changes, and the group decides they're going to do something entirely inappropriate, and you don't have a written plan to say, I'm sorry, but we adopted in 2024 a plan that says we will always consult with the Board of Health, we will focus on these things, or, you know, you could, so you're totally welcome to make a plan. You're not physically required to submit legally a paper plan anywhere. Um, so that's the town expenditure process. The next slide shows you what the um, categories of allowable expenses are. And there is on our website, um, our opio you know, if you go to forcog.org, type in opioid, it's all there. Um, the sort of description of what each of these allowable expenses are. Um, but obviously they, you know, they're very much focused on um, supporting people who are in recovery, preventing further um, opioid use disorder, and um, supporting connections to care and uh, for people who are, who have opioid use disorder. So then um, on page six, you get the thing that took me six months of research to find out and lots of calls to the Attorney General. Um, so this is how the funds are allocated. Um, the first step is that when they made this agreement, they took all the counties in the country and they collected opioid use disorder diagnoses, overdose deaths, and opioid shipments to that county. And they created a like impact of opioids on this county. Um, no, nothing about the state, right? It was just like, what does that county's bundle look like? Then they decided, well, um, we're going to divide up the settlement funds by that county impact. So Franklin County's getting our piece of the J and J, Walmart, Tiva, Allergan, all that. Um, and then in step three, they decided, well, how will we know what parts of the county should get the money? Should get how much money? And they said, well, in this country, except in Massachusetts, counties are in charge of towns. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the town on the census of governments and we're going to see how many health, welfare, and education staff they have. And that will be a sign of how big they are. And the town, the state, the county probably gives them the money to do that. And so that's a sign that they're a bigger town. So in Massachusetts, of course, we get nothing like that. None of our, you, you get none of your authority or money from the county. Um, we get any we have from you. Um, and so what ended up happening is that because healthcare and public welfare are not town level expenditures in Massachusetts, the fact that a school is in a regional school district means there are no people, if you look at the yellow one, there are no staff people <coughs> listed for that town on the census of government. So any town that has its own, its own school is getting dramatically more money than any town that doesn't. So I gave you here a couple examples. This is literally cut and pasted from the data that they used to make this decision. You can see here that Roe and Shelburne, we all know that Shelburne is four times the size of Roe. Shelburne has zero education people listed, education staff. Roe has 10 because they have an elementary school. And then over here you've got Coleraine and Conway. You guys are also a similar size. and you can see that you have 19 education people and Colerain Col has nobody because their, their school is part of the Mohawk School District and your elementary school isn't. So then, you can flip, skip the urban page, I don't know why I gave you so much proof. Um, <laughs> you can see then on this page the sort of bizarre outcome of that, which is that Buckland, my hometown, and exactly pretty much the size of Conway, is getting almost $12,000 over 18 years, and you're getting $134,000. Um, similarly, Gill and Irving, same exact size town, one in a regional, one in, a, one in its own school district, getting almost 10 times as much, right? So it's bizarre. I hunted down the results. You know, I went to the attorney general's office. I went to the governor's office. I said, like, how can this be? Like, how are you penalizing regional school districts? We're, we're already penalized. You know, like, it's hard enough to do business out here, you know. And they were like, it's unchangeable. It's 100% oh unchangeable. Yeah. This was signed off by 29 attorneys general, including our current governor. Um, and that's just how it is. 
even though it doesn't correlate with the fallout of opioid use. There is zero connection between what yeah. you're getting in Conway and the impact of opioids on you. And in fact, if you look at the information sheet, you will see that yeah. you appear to be doing better than many communities right. in terms of opioids. So this is why your regional health district um, d got together and decided that they'd like to propose a regional sharing of some of the money, not all of the money. Right. So, um, Okay. Are you any questions about the about that process? It's so bizarre, but before I go on, I'll just thank you for researching. <laughs> and us the uh, uh, it was incredible, really. I, I was like, I think I found it. I found the census of governments. I can show you. And they were like, Yep, that's right. Can't change it. I was like, Okay, great to live in rural mass. Um, so then the next page just shows you a map of the local local public health collaboratives. You're the dark blue one. Um, just so you have a sense of who's in what group. And then um, the next page, which is 11, shows you how much money each town in um, the district is getting, just this district, so not the whole county. Um, and then... Um, so we're second. So you yeah. and, yeah, you yeah. and Irving are in the lead like with Roe, population what? 500? Oh my God. Um, right behind you. Right. Yeah. Um, but like, how would you know? You know what I mean? Like, that's not anything that would have ever occurred to any of us. And in fact, I know I had a couple meetings with the Roe Board of Health early on where they were like, oh my God, where are all these people? You know what I mean? There's almost nobody in Roe. And they thought, are all of our older adults like on heavy opioids? You know, and I was like, I really don't think so. Um, so we thought it was a zip code thing then, but it isn't. Um, so the last thing here is just a description, I think, that um, Kat can describe of what we've proposed for um, FY25 and ideally 26, so that we're not doing this every year. Um, and you have a breakdown of the costs um, with you, but why don't you tell them a little bit about what these projects are? Okay. Um, well, these are some targeted projects that uh, the region has come up with that um, if Conway uh, adds to the, the general coffers of the community or the, the regional health district can happen and that Conway can avail themselves to, but we don't have to reinvent the wheel in order to do that. And you also don't have to send the money anywhere. You will be invoiced. Exactly. Yeah. The first area is um, projects that support um, people that are in recovery or just getting into recovery. And um, it allows uh, a more of a, like a group discussions and group educating mm -hmm. of the situation of opioid uh, addiction. The second one, which I think is very interesting, is that the second program highlights a single person, a single mom in this particular case, that could be um, supported from the time that they're pregnant through uh, the birth of the child and how someone who is in a active opioid use or opioid recovery, it helps them to be able to um, to not be floundering, basically. And we would be able to uh, contribute to that one. And perhaps if we find a Conwayan who is in need of such services, that part of that could be earmarked for that person in particular. And that's an important piece. And the other one is also um, the uh, uh, another peer-to-peer -peer counseling. This one you you called a slush fund when we were meeting earlier, yeah, you know, right. but that's sort of what it is. Yeah. yeah. So these are, are are just three of potential three projects that, if we were to contribute our some money of our opioid. Uh, settlement money into these projects would be available to Conway people, but also s help support the smaller towns that aren't getting as much uh, funding 
um, to be able to offer, also offer that to their, uh, their citizens as well. And for us, it's a very, um, for me, it's a personal thing. I, I, I think we would be remiss if we didn't participate in this and be able to offer Conway residents programs that are already started. We, we would, um, you know, why, why would I want to reinvent things to create something somewhere else when these are already starting to show that they work? And by supporting these programs, we would um, give Conway the best of both worlds, I think. And um, when it was just the three members of the Board of Health, when it was just Emily, Jackie, and I, that was something that we talked extensively about. Um, but now I have three brand new members who are very eager to get started on some of these projects. So how wonderful would it be to be able to um, get their invigorated um, excitement to working on these and to support the, the communities as a whole. So that's what I'm hoping that we would be able to uh, get from you guys a uh, consensus whether we should could be able to avail ourselves to this by contributing some shared monies into uh, into this program. Thanks. And let me just clarify one thing about the thing I said was a slush fund. Yeah. It's um, <laughs> what it is is the peer the peer recovery coaches already exist. They're already out here meeting with people in the community who work for C they, um, through CHD. They don't need money, they, but they don't have any ability to spend any money in support of a person they're working with. So they'll often have a thing where the person just needs to get a replacement license, needs to get a mailbox, needs to get a suit for an interview. And they said, when I went to meet with them, that's the only thing they want. Like, that's the only thing they, they feel like they need. And so the, the idea here was that for $5,000 a year, they should be able to cover everybody in the 15 towns. Oh, that's cool. Um, so, yeah, it was just very impactful but small dollars. Um, so then this last little handout you have is the one, is the sort of proposed, we didn't want to suggest, the group wanted us to ask for less than the full amount that the people are getting in a year. So the proposal here is to take, as you can see, you know, just to over half of that. Um, and your piece would be $4,300 a year. Questions about any of these proposals? I know, I mean, what we gave you here is just the part in the abatement terms that it responds to, but if you have more questions about what they'd be proposing. Right now, all the recovery kind of capital is in Turner's and Greenfield and Orange. And so, you know, one thing we heard loud and clear when we had the listing session was get out people out on the street, get people out into other places, um, normalize having all recovery meetings in other parts of the region. That was going to be my question, what the feedback was at, the, at those meetings. Yeah, it was, uh, no, don't send postcards to our home. We right. don't read postcards. Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't, you know, uh, there, was, there, was a, there was some interest in, in um, investing in youth prevention, but right now our schools are actually doing a pretty good job with youth prevention, and we have funding through various federal grants and schools so that for now, we're just suggesting this for like a two-year period, you know, and then we see how it works. Um, but it was really give us more people who have walked this walk and make them more available in more parts of the, of the community, essentially. Would so this be an annual contract with the town since the funds come in, or how would that? I think what we were, I think what we're proposing is that a two-year contract um, so that we don't have to do this of checking with 15 towns every year. We have 18 years to do this. We might as well try this for a couple years. I spoke with each of these three organizations. They all understood that what I was asking was that they invoice the town directly, not that they somehow we do some weird thing where you send a cog the money and I may be like, but it's just too complicated. Um, given that it's going to be under $10,000 for everybody, I think they can just invoice you. As long as your select board has voted in favor, you can just pay that out of the special purpose revenue. But how are these people going to know that like our limit is forty three hundred dollars a year? They're going to get this, okay? So and they're going to get your address, and then the idea would be that they would invoice you maybe right. 
you know, and they, I asked them all, would you track? We all understand that like, like in particular, the Moms Do Care program, it's going to serve one parent. That's what all the towns can, you guys could probably afford to, like Kat said, you could potentially cover a parent yourself, but the other towns don't have enough money. So it'll be a parent from one of those 15 towns each year. But so what about Monroe, who has $12.51? Like that means like they don't, get, I mean, they can't, they're not gonna, like they can't provide support to anyone and invoice Monroe for $12. No, Monroe is sending their money to Charlemont. Okay. You can do a thing if you're one of these tiny towns. Both even, Monroe okay, and Holly so are going to go into the AGO's office okay. right. and send their money to Charlemont, and then Charlemont will pay their piece. Okay. Yeah, no, no, obviously nobody. They, they, <laughs> they looked at the portal and they were like, yeah, no, not it's happening. Not happening. <laughs> so the assumption is that someone working with people from Conway through this program will know to invoice the town of Conway up to... $4,300. No, the assumption, that's a good question. The assumption is that we will all hold hands and jump together and assume that our residents will benefit. You will be billed this whether somebody gets work with in okay. one way or not. Okay, all right. Because okay. we don't want to say at a peer recovery meeting, oh, what town are you from? Oh, right. really? I want to tell your select board I'm serving you. Right. You know what I mean? So it it's goes going to the cause, not the individual. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, but but, but 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 you just said though that like you will be the, invoiced directly, yes. But not by but by the by the FERCOG. By one invoice from CHD, one from or, the Recover okay, right, Project, no, and one okay. from Moms Do Care. And, okay. So they're going to figure out what their percentage of our four three one nine they can. Correct. I will figure that out for them. Okay, great. Yes, great. I will figure that out for them and give them a spreadsheet, and they will invoice you. Um, and they said that was fine. They said they'd keep track too, it's so that I think like after a year we can give some kind of report. But they're not going to bill based on services. Yeah, no, you know, no. this is just okay. So how did it wind up CHD? Because there's other. I mean, BHN is local-ish. Greenfield and Greenfield CSO. They all have peer recovery people. They do. Um, I called around. These were the people who expressed an interest. Good I for think. Them. We could do it with BHN next year or, or you know, something too. Um, I'm, I'm good with CHD. Yeah. I was just curious yeah. how it landed with them. Um, I was under the impression that CSO's peer recovery people aren't out making home visits. Is that not right? Uh, they should be, but maybe not. Okay. But I mean, I may have, I may have all not. All peer recovery beaten. people are expected to be out in the communities, not right, in, the, right. in the office. So no, speak. you're raising a good point. I mean, it's it's so. possible that they didn't. I didn't. I wasn't uh, pushing enough yeah, to I, get an answer. I mean, CHD is a quality organization, so it's not a problem. But and I hey, just you've got 18 years. And I was, I, 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 I was, I was <laughs> just curious. Yeah. Yes, I, yeah. I, I, I sort of sent something out, and Shannon Hicks from CHD is who wrote back and Good invited me to come to their meeting, Excellent. and they were very excited about That's that cool. idea. So for those that are watching, the short of it to explain and tell me if I'm wrong in any of this assumption is that because there was absolutely zero correlation between opioid use and the towns, and it was a crazy um, formula put into place. What is being proposed now is to take that same percentage and have each individual town um, offer a, an annual amount over those 18 years to a large purse so it can be used between those towns and it doesn't correspond just to one town or another, correct? For correct, except causes. that right now I'm just, we're just proposing for two years. So right. I do yeah. think that, yes, that's the theory. We, we yes. should do this together because we clearly got, got the money that belonged to each other. Right. You know, mm -hmm. um, uh, but, but right now I'm just asking for the, you know, what, what we've come to propose, just the two years. Right. But with yes, the anticipation or hopes that it would go on for the absolutely. term. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Like Thank your, you. your detective work and you're putting together yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. very good programs for that we're funding is is admirable. Well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Took quite some detective work. I bet it did. <laughs> I was like <laughs> And basically this is the plan that CARES Mass One right. has to do. True so yes. it, you know, and you've done all of the listening sessions and all of that, so if the town supports this we're I mean, and if you yeah. wanted a piece of paper so you have a plan, I'm happy to do that. So this is just, um, again, 
like when I look at the Conway line, we're only annually we're only spending twenty two percent of what we're getting annually. No, is I'm that sorry. Correct? That is that is a totally reasonable interpretation of that. You are getting twenty two percent of the opioid settlement money coming okay. to the fifteen right. members of your health district. This is okay. divided by eighteen years. All right. Yes. So if we if we do this, that means all of our op op opioid sorry opioid settlement money is going to go to the FERCOG. No, no, it's not. Okay. I'm only, I'm, I think that you must have, I don't know how much you spent on the ADs, but you had at least $10,000. We had over 15 grand over 15. in over the two years. Yeah. And somewhere I have all the charts okay. of everything that's coming so, in every yeah. year. So we're only contributing a portion of our settlement Correct. funds to Correct. this annual yes. to this collaboration. Okay. All right. we, we figured that would yeah. be And wise. then does the Board of Health have a plan for... The rest of the money? Yes, we we want to put it into more education, more other um, programs that we uh, that we feel will benefit Conway, and uh, we're working on on working on that now that we've got a full board again after not having a full one for a year. Um, that's something we're eagerly pursuing. And some of you got trained to be Narcan trainers, yes, both right? Yes, me and Jackie. Yeah. And Jackie would still work with me, and mm -hmm. hopefully some of our new members will also take the Narcan training. Mm -hmm. well, you, yeah, you had the Narcan training. I have, first, yeah, I have Narcan yeah. training. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that you were proposing just now that I think is responsive to your question, Erica, is if a parent from Conway shows up at Moms Do Care, you probably have enough money to pay for that one so that that person definitely gets the care and the regional okay. the regional right. 10 bucks okay. from everybody goes to someone else. So right. that's another possibility. Okay. And I can tell Moms Do Care that um, if that's amenable. Yeah, I just, I mean, it seems, it seems like you guys are going to take care of the paperwork. Right. <laughs> yeah. Other than the invoices, yes. <laughs> right. But, uh, <laughs> So well, I'll do the, the tracking for the town. Yeah. 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 Do I mean, have... and it's interesting because Care Mass, they do send you a, um, um, a thing every year telling you that you need to report. And it is, of course, ethical to report. It's not required unless you're getting $35,000 a year. Yeah. So they don't say that in their reporting, but yeah. um, for what it's worth. So do we need a motion? Well, it's not no. No. yeah, this was just the first discussion. discussion right? okay. okay. Yeah, so that, and and I don't know if the board wants to consider because this hasn't been done yet either, and it's obviously because this goes on for so many years. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if the board wanted to consider officially putting the board of health in charge of coming up with all of the suggested uses and then coming to the select board. I think that only makes sense. It makes the most yeah, sense. I mean, because yeah. So we could put that on another agenda yeah. as a, you know, but because it's going to be such a long term, um, it's, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea just to have it on the books that, you know, that's this, a, yeah, this is the process. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, you could ask them to come at a certain, from time before town meeting every year, right. maybe, so that if someone has a question, they can answer it. Well, we, but it doesn't, we don't have to deal with town meeting anymore because of the way the fund's yeah, set up, so it's just a select board meeting, so, right? right? right. So right. as yeah. long as the select board signs off. It would be helpful to me to know for this two-year period if you feel, I mean, it sounds like you feel supportive. Yes. I would love to get the contract kind of moving with them and tell them they have some money. Like, so, can, I, you, um, I mean, if you want, I, I obviously I can to, wait till your next meeting or I whatever. I think we have to wait till we, we can yeah. add it to a vote because yeah. it has to be on the agenda. Yeah. But we could do that on our next meeting. Yeah. Oh, great. That'd be wonderful. Yeah. And yeah. all the time. Fairly certain all of us are supportive of it. Yeah, right. I'm, yeah, I'm on board. That's, that's um, good. And you did a great job. I mean, uh, it shouldn't have been something you had to do. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, presented with the problem, you did a great job <laughs> figuring yeah. the problem out. It's amazing. I mean, what do other towns do that don't have a fur clock to do this for them? <laughs> I know. Yeah, the money in most towns in Massachusetts is just sitting in the bank. Oh, um, anyone is interested? We're having a listening session for the state um, age and dementia friendly plan. The state is, you guys have such an active age, aging um, group, and they are, the state is renewing their plan, and um, if anybody wants to come. Uh, real quick, back to the, the this, um, what other towns have you talked to about your proposal? Ah, uh, Shelburne, Irving, oh, I have a little checklist, but I didn't bring it with me. I mean, the, so the 15 towns all voted yes at their staff meet, at their okay. oversight board meeting. Yeah. And then Northfield, 
Shelburne, Irving, Charlemont, somebody else. Gil is talking tonight. So there's a bunch of, okay. you know, I'd say about maybe half. Got it. Okay. I'm just wondering, you know, obviously, like when, in other towns like ours that are in a position where we were allotted far more money than we should have been allotted. Like Irving. Irving, Irving, Irving. Irving. Irving voted yes. Okay, Irving, Ir the Irving Select Board said we're in favor and it's the Board of Health's job okay, to good. come up with a proposal every year. So um, I think they're sort of your peer in this. Now, experience. do all these towns have to vote yes for it to happen? I mean, Does honestly, if one of the towns with 200 bucks says no, I'm just going <laughs> to go ahead and do it. Okay. <laughs> if no, yeah. also. The other thing, oh, I'll, I will tell you, one, one last thing I've been doing about this bizarre inequity is I reached out to the governor's Western Mass office oh. and Director Gobi from Rural Affairs to see if we could have a meeting to ask the opioid remediation fund to give extra points to reg towns from regional school districts in their oh, wow. um, municipal grant round. Like, how are you going to make good about this? Yeah, you know? right. um, and so we have a meeting about that, I think, tomorrow to talk about it. So our, our um, oversight board, which Kat's the co-chair of, wants to put in an application, too, because this is frankly like you're noting. I mean, it's just yeah. a chump change in almost yeah. any town other than Irving and you. Right. Um, so we want to also submit a regional project, and we would like to get extra points for the fact that we right. got yeah. shafted by being in regional districts. Makes sense. So that's the last piece of it. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And these will Thank you. show up somewhere nearby soon. That's yes. cool. Excellent. See, there's a locking hook on there. Those no. won't be locked up. No, no, no. no. Okay. no, no. They're just <laughs> going to be open. And then actually, the hope is to also have um, the one way masks, right. rescue breathing masks, yes. inside, as well as fentanyl test strips. There's anything we can get, but the guarantee is Narcan. Okay. Our plan is to put one here on this building mm -hmm. and to put one over at the um, public works building. And then we're going to write down what the um, uh, expiration date is, correct? Correct. And also, um, even though Jackie is no longer on the Board of Health, she wants to still contribute because this is important to her as well. And she is going to help us monitor um, that the boxes are full. Okay, sort of a town host in every yeah. town, and exactly. Yeah. Okay, great. great. She asked specifically yeah. to be able to do that. So great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. You yeah. could have this one. Back. Oh, oh, can I? Can I oh. get that one? Oh, yes, oh, yes. yeah, you didn't get that. Sorry. <laughs> And uh, so that's two of the items for new business. I'll go ahead and move back up to the top of the agenda and vote to approve the minutes of July 1st. I uh, motion to approve. Uh -oh. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Animus. Great as always, Adam. Yeah. Quite competent. Mm -hmm. Multiple warrants. Uh, looked over them all. Um, they all look kosher. Yep. So I will vote to approve the counts payable warrant uh, 24-29 in the amount of $518,801.26, as well as the accounts payable W25-03 in the amount of $184,260.12. The payroll warrant in the amount of $112,486.88. And the payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $27,749.48. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous on all. Uh, meetings attended by other select, or by select board members. Erica. Mm, no one in the past two weeks. Lane. Uh, I just had one that was um, on Thursday with the um, buildings Public building. Public building committee uh, about another item we're going to talk about for new business um, that was uh, concerning the uh, public safety uh, building rebid. Um, public comments. All right, unfinished business. None. Back to new business. That was quick. All right, as I stated, for the Thursday meeting I attended, um, we're going to discuss and vote on an agreement with Ron Sweet and the public safety building bid. Um, 
tomorrow I'm going to be here? No. Okay. But um, is it just best that I read this loud, or do you want to talk about how this came to fruition? Um, <clears throat> either one. Um, so on Thursday, the Public Buildings Committee got together to, and on their agenda was to discuss going out, whether or not they should go out to bid again. And of course, the issue was whether or not the issue had become resolved between Ron and the Select Board. So. Um, Ron let us know that as long as an agreement was signed between the select board and he, that he was good to go, and therefore we could continue on and just rebid the project exactly as it had been before. Um, so I've contacted the FERCOG and Andrea Woods, who was retired but is now still going back and doing some piecemeal work for the COG. Um, I can get her the information as soon as it's voted and they can put it back out and have it ready for a bid to come in at the very end of August. So exactly the same bid? Exactly the same bid. Potentially more bidders, we have no idea because, you know, the, the board um, had to reject all bids. So we'll see who bids this time. Um, so uh, we did meet and discuss with Ron the agreement that, you know, he's actually signed off on already. Um, and then we also would need, because this is a new process again, we'd need to sign another procurement um, with the FERCOG for Andrea's services to put it out. So is this, this is the agreement, this is the agreement. Okay. Yeah. that we're agreeing to with Ron. And this has been an ongoing process yeah. for yeah. years. <laughs> and I'm sure you already know Very that if we way. use mm -hmm. Ron, it'll yes. be much cheaper. Yeah. Not to mention, He's from Conway. Right. He's yeah. worked with everybody who's working on the project right. prior. This is basically a win-win. Yes. <laughs> um, I have no problem with this. I, this is a long time coming. I'm very happy to sign this agreement with our highway superintendent. Um, so do we need to make a motion? Yeah. Does he have enough staff? Well, yes. I mean, everything will have to be done, obviously, out off hours. <laughs> That's yeah. why we have to have this right. agreement. Right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the use of uh, town um, equipment, which right. is obviously why it would be a lot cheaper. Right. right. I think essentially it's just an agreement that there will be just compensation <laughs> for the work done outside of, exactly. yes. outside of exactly. the scope of one's salary and contract. Yeah. Yep. So there's a not to exceed amount and it'll, you yep. know, just. Mm -hmm. Has this been reviewed by town council? That, no. Um, we have gone through with Jan and Ron and Chris and I sitting down agreeing on it. Um, although I, I did speak with town council again, but she hasn't seen the wording. Okay, yeah, but, but it's... I don't think there'll be any problems, but no. yeah. It's yeah. very no. boiler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially since the bonus has already been paid out before, mm -hmm. and, you know, so I think there's... Yeah. Um, I move that we sign this agreement with our highway superintendent so that we can proceed with um, the bidding process on our new public safety building. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Um, you know what, do we consider the fur cob one we might need to sign as well? And you're going to need to vote to rebid. Right, right, right. Uh, I make a motion to rebid uh, for the public safety building rehab. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 either me or you. That's kind of weird. I'll put me down. They put it there as a, it depends on how the town wants it to go. So right. I, I mean, figure it's better if it's the board. Date for today, right? 
The 15th, yeah. yeah. And then she'll have Linda sign it and send it back to us. So we'll be that. Great. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Vote to appoint Pam Westgate to the Sustainability Committee for a term ending in June 30th next year, 2025. So just to let you know, I did meet with them last week. Um, our amazing chair, John Meyercheck, um, has decided not to ask to be reappointed. Um, so uh, the not, chair or not, not the because committee? Of, no, just the committee. Oh, okay. Um, I think he wants to enjoy his retirement. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 10-bar. So, anyway, so um, they had, um, Pam had come to a meeting and expressed interest, so they voted to recommend her to the board. So. I move to appoint Pam Westgate to the Sustainability Committee. One more second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Okay, that's it for new business. Moving on to items not anticipated within 48 hours. Um, COA would like approval to have a gathering August 21st at Veterans Park. What's that about? Actually, I forgot to ask Kathy before she goes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> just another social gathering from what I got from Kathy. She just wanted to know if it was okay so they could start planning it. Is Booze involved? No. No, it'll be munchy it's stuff. Age. I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, Bobby, Bobby's little band that this might right. play, you know, something like that. Just the same just as Just another before. little Got it. Okay. Yeah. Little okay. thing. And I just wanted to make sure it was okay to use the space. That's the, just like I got I have no issues. No. Any issues? Not at all. No issues. There's no vote for it. No, the only thing I didn't know, Adam, because I, I didn't break down the schedule, is, is the library doing their story walk. Oh. And should we let them know about that oh. too? Yeah, definitely let them know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you have both sides of the spectrum. Right? right? Like yeah, the children and the elders. <laughs> All right. Cool. Diapers for everyone. Be more stories. <laughs> yeah. Put that in the paper, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This should be an easy one. Appoint Kathy Lamas to Mass and Motion Board of Health representative for a term in need. Also, June 30th, 2025. Yeah, actually, you guys actually yeah. kind of technically did this the last time. We just didn't have the paperwork yeah. for you to sign. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. Right. Okay. So that's It's already been printed. All, right. All you have to do is sign or... Oh, oh okay, better. so there's no motion or anything. Got yeah, it. that one's just... This is easy. Oh, it's just me? Yep. Okay. It's just you for those two. Okay, I'll take care of those. Uh, town admin updates. Um, just two things I wanted to mention. I didn't get a chance to write everything up, but... Um, I don't think I've had a chance to tell you yet that I did buy two moisture meters for oh, okay. the Well, the, it's interesting. They're not humidity meters. What they actually do is measure the moisture in the brick itself. Oh. So there's one for inside the vault and there's one for in the town clerk assessor's office. Oh. Um, just so they can see the difference between the two. Um, and then I'm working on closing out, <coughs> excuse me, this year's MVP project and all the deliverables that they were supposed to do are coming in fast and furious and I'm really looking forward to. They're, they printed out 500 copies of their sort of sum up report and we'll have them available um, soon. I don't know if you guys got the postcard in the mail that yeah. said here's what we did. Yeah, so um, so we're still tying up the strings for that. I have to get everything to the state by July 31st. So. Coming quick? Yes, yes. And hopefully, right on the heels of that, we'll hear about the other grant, fingers yeah. crossed. The other yeah. two grants, fingers crossed. And um, and also, hopefully, by, before the next meeting, I'll have an update for you about the Pine Hill study as well. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, select board member, comments or concerns? Okay. We're still working with the other towns to try to get our neighboring towns together, select boards together, so we can talk about uh, what we talked about on your first meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so we can all get together and see what the towns can do to help each other out. Um, I'm also looking into seeing if we have an option of using a recreational tax mm -hmm. in our town. So um, doing some research on that. Uh, mail. We have some letters <coughs> from Eversource. Mm -hmm. Um, one out to just two, correct? I think there was four, but four. two of them had strange, I mean, they I don't know weird. how they got them to the landowner. Yeah, because yeah. one was, yeah. Both without, 
It was Conway weird. addresses. Um, the, the, uh, we get this every year. The gist right. is they're doing spraying. They're, they're uh, cutting this time. Cutting, cutting, right? Yeah. Not spraying. That's right. But the. Um, yeah, so it's just uh, vegetation work along the power lines uh, that go from uh, Bardwell's Ferry down to the Deerfield River. Use sheep. Goats. goats. I, wish, I wish I could get some goats. <laughs> so that letter, the letters went out on the 9th of this month, it appears. Um, and the two prior to that went out uh, 27th of last month. Yeah. Not much to say there. Like Eric said, this happens every year. Yep. And then Comcast letting us know that the price of HBO. Oh, right. <laughs> well, and, and that, you know, so, I don't have to forward those to you. I get them almost every other week, but I thought you should I see that I get these. Let's just mention this. I know it's not on the mail, but um, it basically states, it is from Comcast, and basically states that they're increasing um, some of the services. Uh, for it's basically all video on demand services and the um, video on demand services price increases outside TV Gaia and Warner Brothers Discovery all increasing um, Warner Brothers by only a dollar per month but the others are two and three dollars per month so everyone has the option of not doing that and finding another source of entertainment <laughs> That's all I'll say. Unless you watch sports. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then you're kind of locked in. That, that's another thing I'll never understand is that you can't watch it on a service that you pay for if you're in the region right. yeah, where it's on over satellite that nobody has. Right. It's very strange. And the streaming is always slow. Yeah. Like people that try to do it. Like, Can you get on that? Yeah. I wish. I can't watch the Red Sox because my brother is using TV. Yeah. And um, Nesson's not on it. Yeah. And if you're not on the same Wi Fi of your home Wi Fi, you can't mm -hmm. do it. Yep. See, this is why some of us just gave up on sports. It just yeah. wasn't worth it. Never just give up on sports. sports. <laughs> <You're in New laughs> okay. So, um, no announcements. Next meeting is going to be July 29th. Um, anybody with anything else? No. Nope. All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.